Good to see you again, Stuart. How are you doing? Not so right. bad, thanks, Ryan. Um, so firstly, why are, you, uh, why are you dressed like that, Stuart? Uh, just a bit of fun. Uh, we've got on our stand today a giant operation table. So right. we're dressed as doctors. And it's just a bit of fun. We're, we're just um, making a link between our, um, our enhanced lifetime mortgage proposition which Mortar Life is yeah. probably predominantly known for as we're specialists in that market. So it's just a way of drawing people in to the stand. There's lots of competition here, loads of people exhibiting. So uh, we just want to try and snaffle a few more uh, a few more customers coming to our stand today. With a bit are you of all dressed like that? We're all dressed like that, yes. Yeah, so we're all doctors today. And we've got some goodies on our stand which are medical related as well. So it's uh, generating a lot of interest. Everyone's stopping and looking at us and saying what's going on there. So it's, it's definitely working anyway. Fantastic. Right, um, so the industry is doing very well at the moment. Yes. Uh, lendings increased by 198 million in yes. the first half of 2016. Yes. So what's driven this growth and how, how will it continue? Is it set to continue in the same way? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, without a doubt, uh, I'll stick my neck out here, I think we are definitely on for a two billion year. I think if, we, if, we, if the second half of the year mirrors the second half of last year, um, then we'll break through the two billion mm. barrier which will be a fantastic milestone for the equity release market. Um, I think what's driving it, there are a number of things that are driving this, this growth, um, uh, some of which are more obvious than others. I think there's just more, there is more interest in this market right now. There are more advisors talking about it. There are more funders and lenders in the market. So there's, a, there's generally more promotion going on with, with an equity release. From consumers as well? From consumers as well. So I think today's consumers who are approaching the point of retirement and about to retire, are more likely to start having conversations with their advisors about equity release than perhaps they would have been five, 10, and certainly 20 years ago. So they're more likely to, to start asking their advisor about accessing the wealth tied up in their home. But what's behind that as well is uh, things like pension reforms, which I think has turned or will turn pension planning on its head. So the traditional model, somebody gets to retirement with a pension fund, and they've got one of two doors in front of them. They either go through the lifetime annuity door or the drawdown door. That's been obliterated now. People have much more choice than ever, than ever before from cashing in through to flexi access drawdown. But um, funnily enough, I think what that will also do and is starting to do is it's making people stop and pause and think, hang on a minute, I've got a 30,000 pound pension pot I could cash in but I've also got a £300,000 home. Can I cash that in? Can I access that cash? So that's driving consumer interest as well. We've also got interest-only mortgages. Um, there's a whole glut of those that are maturing now and will mature over the next 15 years. Lots and lots of people coming to the end of their interest-only mortgage term with no way of repaying that debt, or not at least they can't repay all of that debt. So those people are turning to uh, equity release, uh, or some of them are turning to equity release as well. Do you think that's one of the big factors when it comes to lending increasing? Oh, without a doubt. I think, um, if, in fact, if you look at the total volume of uh, lending that that mm. represents, all of the maturing interest-only mortgages over the next 10, 15 years, it dwarfs the 2 billion market of right. equity release, um, or the 1.6 billion market of equity release. So without a doubt, that will drive consumer demand. It will drive innovation. So I think we'll see more products that are designed to meet that customer need. There are products that already exist to meet that need, interest served solutions, capital repayment solutions, but I think we'll see more products coming through that are designed to meet the, the needs of, of a later life borrower with an interest only mortgage that they want to repay rather than being forced to downsize and move somewhere else in order to repay. Do you think it's being sufficiently um, publicised that it's a solution to the interest only problem? I, I think um, the short answer to that is no. I think that a lot has been done um, in conjunction with mortgage lenders and the regulator, the CML, in order to try and make sure that communication with these customers is much better that people are um, advised much further in advance that there might be a shortfall and they need to address that, so not leave it to the very last moment and then suddenly discover, oh, crikey, I've got a debt to repay that I never knew existed. Mm. So a lot more communication is going out to remind customers with interest only mortgages that you need to repay this debt. There is, a, there is a, a point in time when you'll need to repay it. Whether enough of those customers are aware that equity release might be a solution, I don't, I, I don't think the answer to that question is yes. Some will, but certainly um, we get stories, regular stories of, of brokers who come to us and say their clients 
who have been referred to them or come to them with interest-only debt problems were not aware that equity release could be a solution to their, right. to their need. So we've got to find a way of, of getting consumers more engaged with equity release. And certainly those interest-only customers, uh, interest-only mortgage customers who perhaps will get to a point and start to panic. Okay, perhaps that's advertising? Advertising could be one um, solution. Obviously, two of the, the two largest distributors in this marketplace do a lot of TV advertising, and that's great for consumer awareness. But I think more generally and more widely, as an industry, we need to get better at communicating what equity release can do for you, the solutions that it can deliver for people in retirement. It's not just about repaying debt, although that is an important part. It can do many, many other things as well. It can, it can revolutionise somebody's retirement, completely turn it on its head. And I don't think enough people realise that or know how to go about it and don't know who to contact and how to go about accessing that, that kind of advice. Stuart, how would you respond to the challenge that equity release is expensive and is effectively only a last resort solution? I think the, the issue of it being a last resort um, is, a, is a dying myth. Um, Certainly there would, there would have been a point in time when many customers and advisors would have regarded it like that. So people reaching the very end of their lives um, in need of some cash would resort to equity release uh, as a way of, of, of bailing them out of problems. I think that is changing. I think the statistics in this market prove that. What do I mean by that? I think that um, what the statistics show is that the equity release customer is getting younger. So whereas it, it, it was in the 70s, and it still is around about the 70 mark, but the fastest growing cohort are those under 70. They're still a minority, but it's the fastest growing cohort. So equity release customers are getting younger, and they're using equity release for many different reasons now. It's not just debt repayment. They're using the money to buy a second home. They're using the money to start up new businesses. They're using the money to help their children onto the property ladder. We even heard a case recently of uh, parents using the money so their son could get his pilot's license to fulfill a dream of flying jet, jet airplanes. And he's now a pilot for EasyJet or Ryanair or one of those. So equity release is being used for all sorts of reasons now by a younger audience. And I think coupled to that is this idea that somehow it's expensive. Rates have come down in the equity release world, whereas we were seeing rates of sevens and eights. Um, now we're seeing rates as low as three point something, four point something. Um, but even that is a bit of a misnomer because very often what people forget is that these, are rate, these rates are fixed for life. And that could be 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of a, of a fixed rate of four or 5%. And the customer never has to repay that interest. It rolls up in the background. So they're never going to have to meet that debt. It's repaid when they die. So I think this, this idea that it's expensive is misleading. It's not really addressing the, the, right, the right question, if you like. So equity release is getting cheaper. The people buying it are getting younger. Uh, they're using it for a much more, uh, more, a much wider variety of reasons than they've ever done in the past. So all of those myths about what X release was and used to be, I think, are now disappearing into the mists of time. Can I ask, um, in terms of these younger, older borrowers now you're talking about coming to the market, how do they differ from the equity release customer of old? Uh, apart from the fact that they are younger, I think they are, they are certainly more savvy, um, uh, financially savvy, technically savvy, so they're, they're, they're using the internet to research more. Um, they are probably finding out more about equity release before they even get to the point of, of speaking to an advisor. And as I said, I think pension reforms will drive some of this as well. So I think people are reaching the point of retirement and some people and a growing number of people are recognizing that their home is an asset. So my father, his father before him, would have regarded the family home as the nest egg to pass on to the children. I think tomorrow's, today's and tomorrow's retirees are less likely to think that. They're more likely to regard the house as an asset that they could use to boost their retirement. And they might be, want to pass their pension fund on as the nest egg to the children, because you can do that now, of course. So I think um, the people approaching uh, equity release now just have a different viewpoint of what it is and what it can do for them. So what are the main challenges facing intermediaries who want to advise in this area? I think uh, the... <clears throat> The main challenges facing intermediaries in this market are this is 
This market has changed. Uh, it's 25 years old now. The market that we know today as equity lease is about 25 years old. It actually goes back further than that, but it wasn't called equity release back then. The market has changed. It used to be niche. It's now a specialist advice market. And people operating in it are operating at a, at a specialist level of advice. It's not just about knowing about products. You've got to know how to deal with older borrowers and the problems that older borrowers will face. Lack of, uh, losing mental capacity, for example. You've got to know about how equity release will affect state benefits, how will it affect IHT planning. So it's a very specialist market. It's not a market for dabblers. So advisors who think that they can come into this market, maybe do one or two cases a year, you can do that, and some people do do that, but you'd have to question whether doing that level of business is giving you the, the right uh, view and knowledge of the market, because the market has changed remarkably, even in the last six months. Rates have come down, new, new lenders have appeared, new products have appeared. So to try and keep pace with that change, you've got to be a specialist in this market. So I think that the key challenge for advisors is keeping pace with all of that change and making sure you're up to date with that and making sure that you are a specialist because if you're not specialising, what you should be doing probably is referring clients to somebody who is a specialist and there are plenty of channels. For Do you think the term lifetime mortgage is in many ways inaccurate and in that it's quite a diff different from a standard mortgage? Um, <clears throat> I think the term mortgage is easier for a client to get their head around an equity release. I think a lot of people might be quite puzzled by the term equity release talk about mortgages and okay well, I know what a mortgage is the lifetime mortgage is just a mortgage that lasts the rest of your lifetime we tend to talk more in terms of retirement lending um, so this a lifetime mortgage is just a, a loan for, for later life borrowers so there's been lots of debate in the past about whether we need to rebrand equity release come up with some new name for it I don't know whether that's the solution but I think going back to my communication point we'd certainly need to get better at explaining what it is that this can do for you. And I think equity release in that sense might be the wrong label. We might need a different way of explaining it. Uh, whether it's lifetime mortgage, later life borrowing, retirement lending, you know, all of those phrases can... But everyone needs to decide, don't they? Everyone needs to get together and decide on... Yes, absolutely. And, and, and the thing is that equity release, as we know it today, is part of a much wider retirement lending landscape. And you already have um, many, many products today on the market designed for older borrowers. Not just equity release products, you've got um, re uh, standard mortgages designed for older borrowers, you've got um, other loans, other types of loans designed for older borrowers uh, from lenders who will lend to people into their 70s and into their 80s. So the retirement lending market already is, is very big. Equity release is, is part of that. But I do think we need to get better at explaining all of that to consumers. Um, because equity release is just part of, the, part of the solution, part of the jigsaw. So what sets More to Life apart from other equity release lenders? Um, I think a number of things. Um, we are now the third largest lender in the marketplace uh, by volume of sales and uh, we have ambitions to be much bigger. I think what uh, the key things that set More to Life apart can be broken down into the following areas. One I've already mentioned about our enhanced uh, proposition. We're a specialist in that area, we pioneered that. So we're well known for our, um, our product features and our, our leading products in that, in that area. But also what More to Life has done more recently is introduce new innovation to this market. So earlier this year we launched a new online portal and for the first time in the equity release market we delivered a true online end-to-end -end processing system. And that includes signatureless applications. Now, that's been commonplace in the residential market for many years, but it's not made its way across the fence into the lifetime mortgage market. More to Life was the first provider to do that. Um, so we're listening to our advisors. We're delivering new technology to help them create uh, and deliver a much faster service to their clients. And we're, we're seeing that with the new technology now. So what used to take many weeks to go from a, a quotation to an application to an offer to completion, we're now seeing in some, in some cases that's been shortened down to, in some cases, a few days. We can literally go from an, a, a KFI quotation to an offer within two or three working days. That's all down to the technology and that's, that's almost unheard of in this market. So technology 
Um, product innovation and the fact that we are, we are leading the way in terms of trying to come up with new ideas, new product innovation for this market. I think some of the things, some of the really exciting things for me uh, is not, not just what's happening in the market right now and the fact that we, we're probably going to have a record year as I said earlier, but next year the product innovation that we're going to see in this market is going to be, it's going to be amazing and more to life will be at, at, the front, uh, at the front of the queue on that. Can you give us a hint of what, what that will look like? Um, I think there will certainly be developments in areas such as interest served that we, we talked about earlier. We had an interest served product, we've taken that off the shelves to redesign it and bring it back to the marketplace to meet the modern needs of today's retirees looking for that solution. So there'll be those kind of solutions, there'll be, I believe, hybrid product solutions that, that uh, bridge the gap between a full roll-up and interest only. Um, so there will be those types of product solutions that will be coming to the market and more to life are absolutely going to be at the, the front of the queue in terms of innovation. What about technology as well? Is there anywhere else you mentioned, um, what was it you mentioned with signatures, online signatures, is there, is there anywhere else the uh, equity release sector can effectively catch up with the mainstream resi? I think uh, we'd like to see more of that and spread across the market so that all lenders are doing that kind of thing it's still not, it's not commonplace amongst all lenders. But I think also at the front end, there is, there is much more that we could do digitally and online to communicate with customers and engage with customers and help bridge the gap between customers and advisors and make that, that whole journey from somebody who's thinking about equity release but isn't maybe sold on it through to actually taking out their loan and receiving that money at the end. So there is, there is much more I think we can do with technology in order to, to help that process for sure. And again, that's something that we as a lender are starting to look at. The, developing tools that will help advisors present equity release as a solution to customers, but putting it in layman's terms so that customers can understand. Uh, can I ask you what kind of tools? Um, at the moment it's still under development, so I don't want to reveal too much, but online tools that, that will enable advisors to present equity release as a solution. So these are things that will help um, certainly the newer advisors entering this market who are maybe unsure about how to position it, they're unsure how to overcome some of the myths, like we said earlier about it being too expensive, or it's a niche product, or all the other things that people think they know about equity release but aren't true. Probably never were true, certainly aren't true today. So tools um, and sales and promotional tools that help advisors present equity release and the solutions uh, that it can deliver for, for consumers in retirement. All right, Stuart, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, uh, Cheers. Great stuff.